This week on Africa Weekly, we take you to Madagascar to learn about Fanarona, a strategy game similar to chess, which has been played in the country since the 14th century. And we travel to Kenya, where a Nairobi artist is taking refuse and turning it into art, hoping to raise awareness about wildlife and habitat preservation. But first, a summary of the stories that made the headlines this week. Zimbabwe's top court dismissed an opposition bid to have presidential election results thrown out over alleged rigging in favor of Robert Mugabe's successor, Emerson Mnangagwa. The leader's ministers expressed satisfaction with the court decision. We have never had the cleanest, fairest, most transparent, most credible elections such as we went through this past uh, election. Lawyers for the Movement for Democratic Change opposition argued that the results should be annulled due to, quote, massive doctoring of the July 30th vote. Uh, the, the people pointing fingers and uh, acting as uh, demigods, uh, but uh, look, uh, uh, we, 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 we don't, uh, you know, we don't frown at that. It's, 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 it's indicative of people who are afraid of something. Mnangagwa of the ruling ZANU-PF party won the election with 50.8 percent of the vote, just enough to meet the 50 percent threshold needed to avoid a runoff against MDC leader Nelson Chamisa. In Mali, the main opposition candidate, Sumaila Sise, has said that he, quote, categorically rejects the results of the presidential runoff that handed a second term to Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Sisei called for a march to protest the contested poll results. Next Saturday, August 25th, standing proud of our citizenship, let us all walk together to restore and strengthen our democracy. Morocco's King Mohammed VI has pardoned a total of 188 people linked to the Hirak protest movement on the occasion of Islam's Eid al-Adha religious feast. The social unrest linked to Hirak began in October 2016 after the death of a fisherman and spiraled into a wave of protests. Uganda's once powerful police boss pleaded not guilty in a military court to a raft of charges including arming a criminal gang and allowing refugees to be abducted by police. 62-year-old Kali Kaihura was sacked by President Yaweri Museveni in March and arrested in June. Kaihura's arrest came after a period in which he had been increasingly blamed for failing to solve a string of high-profile murders, kidnappings and robberies. South Africa accused U.S. President Donald Trump of fueling racial tensions after he tweeted that farmers were being forced off their land and many of them killed. The leader's tweet touched on the overwhelmingly white ownership of farmland in South Africa, one of the most sensitive issues in the country's post-apartheid history. Ghana's former president, John Mahama, announced his bid to seek the nomination of the main opposition party and contest the 2020 election. Mahama became president in 2012 but lost his re-election bid to President Nana Akufo Addo of the New Patriotic Party in 2016. The former leader said his decision was due to a groundswell of support from Ghanaians. A wave of tributes poured in for Ghana-born Kofi Annan, who died Saturday, aged 80. Annan was the first UN Secretary General from Sub-Saharan Africa and was head of the organization during the 1994 Rwandan genocide, where, according to UN figures, 800,000 people died. But Annan also acted as a lauded peacekeeper when he was a mediator in the political crisis in Kenya, where he worked to help stamp out the fires of electoral violence in 2008. Where he's going, all 80-year-old Andre needs is a bottle of stones. These and a basic playing board traced out by hand form the basis of the Malagasy game Fanorona. At least seven centuries old, it remains a popular pastime. Yes, I drew that. I can't engage in any more physical effort. But Fanarona at least lets me use my brain. It's a complex game of strategy, with each player aiming to capture their opponent's 22 pieces. 
Players insist the rewards go beyond just the winning. Fanarona teaches you to anticipate, to persevere. It gives you strength to face life. It makes you brave. And now there's Eferona, the video game. Created here in Madagascar, it's been downloaded over 30,000 times since its launch four years ago. One download in Argentina, one in China, two in France, two in Germany, three in the United States. And I was pleasantly surprised. I feel we're getting closer to our goal when we created eFanarona, which is to make it global. Farona even featured in the hit action-adventure game series Assassin's Creed in 2012 and 2013. But on the streets of Antananarivo, the ancient form of the game still has its followers, both young and old. Evans often comes to this rubbish tip in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. For him, it's a source of inspiration. His next creation is probably hiding among the waste. I'm collecting whatever material I find, like parts of a motorcycle. So by the look of things, this will end up into a very amazing sculpture. In his makeshift workshop, Evans transforms the cast aside objects into works of art. Although he studied painting, little by little, he swapped his brushes for a more original art form. All my life I've been that kid that loved collecting stuff since I was a kid. But it never blossomed until I went to campus, you know, where we started creating artwork from unconventional materials. Sculptures, pictures and even jewellery. For this 29-year-old, the possibilities are endless. The Pico, this was inspired by the culturally you know, the forks and the spoons. Because I was out buying my junk and I saw them for so many, and I thought these ones would fit very much into the peacock. For Evans, recycling rubbish and reducing waste has become a way of life that he hopes will catch on in Kenya. It's not only people that need second chances, but also those objects that cannot speak for themselves. They need that second chance before you can trust them, just re re rethink about them. A full-time artist, Evans held his first exhibition in Nairobi a few months ago. He's now working flat out on new pieces that he hopes to display to the public soon. Liberian football star turned president George Weah has won world headlines by conferring his country's top honor on his former boss, Arsene Wenger. But back home, not everyone is happy. Way awarded Arsene Wenger and Claude Leroy, the two French coaches who gave his football career an early boost, with Liberia's highest distinction. That's all from us at Africa Weekly. Until next week.